uh, Land Speed record car in 1924. Hello, this is BJ from Hearns Hobbies and welcome back to an episode where I'm going to be showing off one of my favourite kits. It's this one. It is the Italaria 112 scale Fiat Fostafelle. I can never pronounce it correctly, but it's been one of my favourites for a while. Now, I've been waiting for this kit for some time. Um, I've actually got it in my stash now, so I'm not going to build it for a little bit, but it did take a while because during lockdowns and such, it had been a hard kit to come by. Now, this particular car, if you're not familiar with it, was a speed record uh, car. Uh, it was um, uh, put together by Eldridge. Um, pretty sure it was an Englishman, um, and he was running for the, um, uh, the world uh, land speed record in France, and he broke it in 1924, and I think the car reached a speed of 235 kilometers, which is quite remarkable back then. You think about how long ago it was, that's 100 years ago. Now this particular car was actually, it's a hybrid. It's built from a racing car, a Fiat racing car. It was an SB4, and when Eldridge got hold of the car, um, he converted it to accept the huge 22 liter Fiat aircraft engine and lengthened the chassis, dropped in the front. And it's quite remarkable, super long nose, really aggressive looking car, actually really sleek lines because the original SB4 is really open, actually looked pretty ugly, but this is a bit of a monster. So how about we'll put it down on the overhead camera and we'll have a closer look inside. Okay, so from the top there you can see this is a photo of the actual real car. The car's been restored and is currently living in the Fiat Museum. It has been brought out a couple of times, 2001, 2011, uh, at the Goodwood, um, uh, what do they call it? Festival of Speed. Now, quite impressive looking here. From what I can tell, I mean, it, it had various guises in its history. So, th this is one of the earlier shapes. They did play around the front nose here as well, um, as well as the exhaust. But this is the form that it actually looks like now. There are some... Uh, uh, suggestions that it could have been in a black painted finish as well but I think it looks fantastic in the Fiat and very much in Italian red and if we look at the side of the boss we've got some more details here these are actual pictures of the are they no they're of the actual car too so they're great for using as references and then this gives you an indication of how long it's going it's going to be 45 centimeters long when it's fully built you got a little bit of history here and there's some images of Eldridge behind his car and then the actual car there too but I think one of the most impressive things is actually the kit itself. So let's have a closer look. All right, lots of bits and pieces. Okay, we've got bags, bags, parts. We've got a lot of bits here. We've got a plastic container that's full of individual screws. This is very reminiscent of the boxes you find in like Artisania wooden ship kits. Bits, tires, bodywork, and other stuff. So how about I'll put this to the side and we'll have a closer look at all these bits. All right, so first bag. All right, first up we've got this. We've got the wheels. Let's do a bit of a zoom, a bit easier to see. Let me just focus that. Okay, so we've got the wire wheels. There's quite a number of them, as in sprues that is. Okay, so we've got four sprues, obviously, so one for each wheel, and there's four components for each, because you can imagine why wheels, they're layered to get their strength. Now, one of the uh, things that uh, impresses me here is how well the wire wheels have been actually molded. They are quite fine. There's hardly any flash on them, so I'll be quite happy to use them the way they are. Some people would be inclined to actually replace all these with wire. I mean, you could do that. And it would look a little bit finer. But I think that looks pretty good. Okay, so you've got... This is all the four segments of these wheels. And you can see the hubs in a couple of them there as well. Okay, so they just get sandwiched together to get your wire wheel effect those aside. All right, the next thing we're going to look at is the chrome. Now there's not a lot of chrome on this particular car, but 
Actually, this side probably gives us a bit of showing. We've got the wheel. Okay, obviously the outside will not be chrome. You'll be painting that a either a leather colored finish. Got a couple of circular sections here. Not too sure what they're for. They look like they're on the wheels somewhere. I've got this really nice um, area here for the dashboard. Let me zoom in here just so you can actually fully appreciate what I'm talking about. If I can get the focus right. You might be able to just see there. I'm just trying to get that reflection. You see the sort of, what would you call that? The polish ring look? So you can see there's, there's some switches that are molded on. There are a couple of uh, mold ejection pin marks, which isn't too bad, but the majority of this is actually machined surface detail. You could probably fill these in and give them a light sand and they'll look okay. They'll look like some more polish marks, but I quite like that. It's quite a bit of an attention to detail. You've got the, uh, the knockoff hubs there for the wheels. That would be the ends that you see. A variety of little connectors here. Now I don't really know what they're for. They're probably spark plugs I'm guessing. I think it was two per cylinder. Looks like too many there. We're checking the instructions anyway. And you've got a few other components here. It's probably part of a, uh, a grill and then that's probably part of the steering column. Okay, so chrome bits. Next we get into this part. There's a lot of sprues here and these, if you haven't worked it out already, is actually the chain. It comes with a working chain. Now they're individually linked. And you can just see how you've got segments that are molded in strips, like so. Let me get these out of the way. And then you've got the opposing side here. So that's designed so you can fit each segment on top of each other and then put the top on there and then you'll seal them all in. Now from memory, these are sealed together by heating up the end of a nail and pressing it across here. A bit like a rivet, so you need to be careful when you're doing that. But there's a lot of links here. I've got some individual ones there. They'll obviously be for adjusting the tension uh, and then for the, so the final uh, joining of the, the two ends together. So with that, we've got, what have we got here? One, two, three, four, five sprues there. That's just for the chain. Okay, so your chain bits, and then we're getting some more chunky parts now. All right, so this bag consists of parts of the engine. Okay, you can see the engine right here. You've got all the cylinders that'll pop out the top here. So it's a big six cylinder, 22 liter. Got the base there. This would be the sump, or I guess, is it a sump? It wouldn't have a sump. Bottom of the engine. This appears to be a carburetor. Got the ends of uh, spark plug leads, or the, what do you call it, um, distributors. That could be the flywheel. Got some really big casting strength lines there. Okay, so that's the engine bit. And then we've got these two different black parts here. Here we've got multiple pieces of, these will be for the, uh, the dampers. There's circular sections that go in between. Let's get a close up of that. So there's quite a bit of assembly involved here. Okay, so multiple parts which look very similar. So they're sandwiched together. I'm pretty sure this has working suspension as well, so these should be all working. Okay, so that is the dampers. And then we have parts of the suspension. 
So this will be the front suspension I'm, I'll be gathering. So you've got the sections here. There'll be engine components here as well. Now being a very early car, I can't recognize a lot of these bits. I mean, it is pretty simple car from that, that era. This appears to be a, a crown wheel and pinion. That's probably for the steering, I'm guessing. Okay, you'll see there. Got the pinion on the end of a shaft there, the crown wheel. There's that section that's probably for the front end, strut for your suspension on the front end. Now these are interesting, these little links here will probably go on the engine I'm guessing. And there's the other side. Okay, so we've got that. Go to the next bag. Next bag we have we've got the seat. The seat's got a really nice texture on it, leather finished texture. We've got the two halves for the exhaust, so that's the extractor part. You've got the actual exhaust pipe here. This sits along the side of the, the chassis. Got some suspension components here as well. These here, this will be the sprockets I'm guessing for the chain drive. So you've got this in here, so that'll be the pinion. You've got the main sprocket there towards the rear wheels. Close up here, I'll show you the texture on the seat. So you can just see it there. It's an uneven texture, it's really quite nice. And you've got the fine teeth there, very well formed. So you'll be having the uh, the working chain going around those. And then you've got the extractor part of it, of the exhaust, really big and chunky. Okay, as you can see there are a lot of parts. Now what do we have here? Another selection of black components. So we've got all the cylinders here. The cylinders are actually molded with slide molding, I think. Must be, because they're all hollowed out. Got all these sections here for parts of the cylinders. You've got uh, leaf springs. Some sort of strut system here. Looks like it goes on the bottom of the chassis. Some more leaf springs here. Let's see. They're fairly firm, they look like they'll work. Got a variety of little tiny bits and pieces, which we'll check on the instruction manual. So let's just have a look at these cylinders. So you can see how they're molded all the way through here. All the parts are remarkably clean. Some little pin type things here. no flash. And then that's the other side. Okay. All right, what do we have here? We've got some multicolored parts. So I've got some timber looking parts here. Those will be for the, uh, the cockpit. And then we've got some gold colored parts, which are the brass finished parts. You've got the, uh, the grill. There's all the carburetor parts. The fuel injection. Oh, it wouldn't be injection. Well, the fuel rail, I'm guessing. And other components there. So that should be finished in a brass. So it's nice how it's already in a 
So a pretty finished oh, base color, I guess. You can see the Fiat symbol just on the, the top of the grill there. You can see how the, the grill itself has got quite even uh, holes. None of them are filled in, very, very clean. So this is all multi piece. You've got the actual radiator there, it's quite thick. These are the tops of the cylinders, I think. Might be the valves. So these are the rails, I'm guessing, for fuel. And then you've got a few other bits and pieces here too. Okay, so that's the metal parts. Here's the wooden pieces. So you've got sections here which um, replicate the, the chassis. That would be the front end of the chassis, I think. And then we actually got the floor of the cockpit, the backside, and then this is probably the no, I don't really know. That's probably the instrument panel side. Now if I go in you'll be able to see some of the wood texture that's on this. Okay, so you can just see it. I'm just trying to move it around so you can see it through the reflections. Here we go. And focus. Here we go. See some of that. I mean, if you really w wanted to, you could probably use some really thin veneer to get even more of a wooden texture. You probably only need something really, really thin. But you get even. Um, score in and um, put in extra detail if you wanted to just on the plastic itself okay all right so those are the main bag bits I've got this section here which is on the very bottom of the box this is actually the rails of the chassis so this gives you an in indication of just how long this kit's going to be Okay, so it's going to be just slightly longer than this. So what was it? 47 centimeters, I think the overall length was meant to be. You'll notice the really big injection pin marks here. So you just need to be very careful when you're cutting that. You probably want something like a very fine tooth saw. It does have some quite nice uh, rivet detail. So as I go along this rail, you can see some of the, the detail there coming through. That's probably not so nice. That's a sink mark. A sink mark you just need to fill in. Um, you'll have that happening with thick parts from time to time. Yep, so the sink mark is because there's this large section just here. And where it's shrunk is just sunken in. And that's natural. That's just one of those phenomena that happens. There's all your rivet detail. Another sink mark which you'd want to fill in. Just a matter of checking over all the parts, a few more there. And it generally happens on very thick bits. It's nothing that you can't handle with a little bit of filler and a bit of sandpaper. There's a close up of those, the points where the plastic is injected. And as you can imagine, really thick plastic needs a lot of uh, movement of the material, so this definitely helps. With the molding process, not so helpful when you're actually building it though. So you just got to take extra care when you're taking that off and cleaning off those joints. Okay, what else we got? Okay, so we've got the nice bodywork left to go. All right, so let's pull out the bodywork. We've got the bonnet panels. We've got the actual cabin section. And then this is probably the under parts of the chassis. Pull all these out and have a closer look. Now Eldridge did uh, modify the bodywork for his land speed record car to be a bit more aerodynamic. So hence you've got the oops, this bag's trying to attach 
Tech me. All right. So you can see the, uh, the streamlined back section of the, the car body. You've got that teardrop sort of shape, and then you've got the really massive bonnet. Got this curved section here, which will be the back end. Okay, so that will attach to this section here. So you can see how it's basically got an under tray as well. And then as we do the bonnet section, let's see, that'll be like this. That gives you an idea of exactly how long the bonnet is on this car, because it would have normally gone up to about here, I think. It's added quite a lot more to the length of the car to fit in that aircraft engine. And these bonnet sides are hinged so that they can be opened up and you have full view of the engine detail. This side's got the big cutout for the exhaust. That goes on this side. And the louvers are actually quite well molded. They actually see through. So they do need a little bit of work to make them even. I think I just need a little bit of cleaning up work. So you should be able to see just through here. You can't quite see through, but they do go through each one of those levers. Oh, there we go. Just had to get it on the right angle. So you probably just want to put in a sheet of sandpaper in there, a bit of emery, just to clean all those up. But as they are, they're already pretty, pretty well molded. Okay, so you got that, and then you've got these big sections here. So this would be under tray sections for here, I'd say. Looks like it fits over here. All right, so we've got that. And this will fit over here. Quite aerodynamic. Looks good. Okay, so let's move that over here. All right, we've still got more to go. We've got Bag of tyres. Okay, so they're really thin, like bicycle tyres. I mean, back then, that is what they thought uh, you needed. So they've got nice tread patterns on them. So you can see a nicely moulded tread pattern. Then on the sides, there's actually no detail on the sides, but you can see the, the mold patterns here along the edge. There's a couple of uh, mold marks there, just need to be cleaned up a little bit. Generally pretty clean looking, and the rubber is quite soft. Okay, so we've got that, and now what else do we have? We have this special box full of parts. Okay, so we've got a section here which is like a leatherette. Bit of fabric. We've got some vinyl hoses, some clear, some black, and super chunky one there as well. Some more hoses. Got tiny, tiny springs. Got some rope. So this is a rope that was wrapped around the exhaust so that you didn't burn yourself when you touched it accidentally because this ran along the side of the, uh, the cockpit. Got some copper wire. Got some various screws, shafts, all included. So if I do a close up here, there's your leatherette. The hoses, tiny, tiny springs just in here. Some more hoses there. That's the, the rope with the copper wire. Various little screws, a lot, a lot of parts. Really tiny ones in there. Okay, so that's that special bits there. And then the final parts are in this little bag. So I've got the decals. OK, 
Okay, so there's a clear section here. It's uh, self adhesive. It's got a backing on it. You may not see, but this is actually the painting mask for the Fiat. Let's see if I can focus in on there. Okay, so you've got a, a very small windscreen, which is here. And then we've got uh, dial lenses. And you might be able to just make that out. You see the Fiat there, and it's in the shape of the, the front grille. So you use that, where well, you stick that onto the front grille, and you airbrush or spray paint over the top the white Fiat onto the grille itself. So that's a nice touch. From there, we've also got, well, actually, this one looks like the mask. I don't know what, what, the, what it is now, actually. Well, this will be an actual taped mask. It will give very sharp edges. The other one will be a hard plastic mask. It'll probably give soft edges. I guess it depends on what sort of finish you want. I'll get that double checked in the manual, but this looks identical size to the other one. And then we have the decals. So the decals are right here. So you've got the, the plaque there. You've got the Mephistopheles markings there, which go on the sides of the, the bonnet. There's a variety of straight silver lines here. I don't know what they're for, but there's your huge fiats that go on the side of the, the bonnet as well. And there's your instrument panel. Okay, so they're all the parts from the kit. And now we'll have a, a look at the manual. Okay, so here's your manual. Nice compact looking one. It's quite thick though, as you can imagine. There's a lot of a lot of parts. Okay, so we've got some uh, photos of the actual car. Good reference. Multi-language instruction here. This is the legend of all the parts. You've got all the fine bits which are in that small parts box. And then we go through all the plastic parts. A lot of sprues. They're all numbered as well, so you can actually tell where to find a part if you're not sure. And then we start building. So you build the uh, the chassis rail first. And then there's the front suspension. Leaf springs. The construction of the, uh, the dampener. So that's a friction damper. That all gets attached to the front end. We've got the, uh, the little pinion gear and crown wheel here, which we looked at earlier. So that is indeed for the steering. So that goes into a housing and assembled to the side of the rail. Next, we start building, this looks like the rear suspension. We've got the leaf springs, uh, the hub. Uh, again, there's two sets of friction dampers. So you do it for both sides. And then you've got the big axle that goes through Actually, this is a control area. You've got levers. So that'll be for changing gears and also for the brakes. Go through the shaft. You've got an attachment of the suspension, left and right. Uh, what have we got here? This is probably, I don't know what that is actually, but uh, your rear suspension connects to it. This is like the, uh, the swing arms. Next, we work into the bodywork. All the uh, the cockpit instrument panel that gets attached. The body gets attached onto the chassis. Start doing the rear end panels. These are the lower panels, um, and then the floor. Got the fireball going into place, and then we start the engine assembly. So you've got uh, the engine, all your cylinders, cylinder heads various rails, you've got your, um, oh, there are all the tiny springs there for the, the valves. You've got the distributor here with all the cables. There's two distributors. And so they'll all be going to the individual uh, spark plugs. This looks like the fuel system. These must be individual carbs, so there's four carbs. There's the intake going in place. Engine gets dropped into the chassis rail right there. You've got those two wooden sections there, which go onto the sides. We've got the, uh, the radiator getting put together, those three parts. Uh, here's a clear film. So let's have a look here. So 
So these are, what's your idea of that? Well, it shows you how to locate it. The holes serve only to adjust closure of the engine bonnet. Oh, okay, so you need to put a couple of holes in here. It doesn't actually state what the clear film here is for. Let's see if we work it out a bit later. All right, so your, your radio goes into place. Got some cables there. This is the under tray areas. They get cleaned up. They get clipped into place. And then you've got your throttle controls here. They're all getting linked up. Steering column. And that gets connected onto the uh, uh, the mechanism there. You got the windscreen going into place. Here's the exhaust getting put together and the winding of the uh, the rope section. Doing the bonnet covers. So what have we got here? Oh, okay. So that leatherette section there, that uh, fabric, that's used for the straps for keeping the uh, the bonnet in place. Here we've got the bonnet just getting clipped into place here. On the hinges we've got all the uh, the sets of working chain you see how they they're stacked on top of each other and then you use the end of a, a hot nail or screwdriver just to seal them into place and you get the point where you got the last one and the links it's all sealed up and then we start putting the wheels together so you've got four sections for each wheel you got hubs in the center We've got the straps going on, so these are the finishing touches. You've got the, uh, the main sprocket, the drive sprocket, the chain, wheels with their knockoffs, and then I guess that's the optional starter handle if you want to leave that in there. And that's it, it's all finished. So it doesn't really explain what the, um, the masks were for, but I suggest they're paint masks. So you either got the, uh, the, the hard one, which will give you a soft edge, which will probably look more realistic, or you can use the uh, the more traditional tape type one. So these are photos of actual finished model. And that's the end of the manual. So there you go. I thought that that would be quite interesting and there you go. I love this. And I'm going to be building this uh, hopefully for the next Model Expo. Won't make it for this Model Expo. Not enough time, there's only one month to go. But this will be in a future Model Expo if you'd like to, to see it. And hopefully I'll give you some uh, progress as I build it. But that is the magnificent Italeri uh, 112 Mephisto Fede. Oops, dropping bits. Uh, which was the uh, land speed record car in 1924. And it's actually the last car that ran on a public road uh, achieving that. So there you go. Very nice kit indeed. Look out for it. Thank you for watching.